Hi paint shoppers, welcome to my site and welcome to this video tutorial. Seems to me I've said that like about 50 times in the last couple hours and hopefully I'll get this thing right now. Um, okay, this is a tutorial about the pen tool. The pen tool is one of those things that if you've tried it and you don't understand it, then you hate it. If you're trying to figure out what it does, then this is a good place to be. It's a vector tool. And that you make vector lines and vector curves. And the uh, nice thing about vectors is you can make them larger without losing quality. If you take a picture and make it larger, you're going to lose some quality along the way. So with vectors, uh, you can you can make it bigger. Now this particular little geckoy thing uh, was the tattoo on the forearm of someone that I know. And I took a picture of the tattoo and uh, worked away at it over a few nights. And this is what I got. I quite like it. I actually add this onto the photograph of a, a horse. I put it on their neck as as the horse's tattoo, and the, the horse people quite liked it. Okay, so another thing you can do is you can ink a, a photograph. This started off as a photograph of a young girl, and uh, I thought I'm gonna see what I can do with this with the pen tool. And uh, with I go to the layers view, current only. This was the original photograph. And I, I made some errors. I mean, I always make errors because I'm not an artistic kind of guy. But uh, I had fun doing it, and now I know how to do it. So that's uh, that's the second thing you can do with it. Another thing you can do is make little pieces of art like this. This is called, this is my swoosh. And it started off with a big kind of orangey blob. And uh, I made a second vector with white as the chosen color and made it into a nice sharp point here and nice shape and then I duplicated and moved and duplicated and moved and this is what I've got now so that's what uh, what you can do with it you can also do some amazing cutouts it's a wonderful selection tool for getting around an object and really fine-tuning the adjustment uh, you don't have to worry about feathering and that kind of stuff uh, you just work away at it until you got it and I'll show you how some of that is well Okay, so let's take a look at the pen tool and all those little op uh, options you can use with it. Here's the tool itself, and these are all the options for it. Now, the important ones apply once you've got a, a, a curve or a line and you want to keep it, you hit the apply button, or you right click and hit apply. Mode, uh, this is the edit mode if you want to edit your curves. This is for doing lines and polylines. This one's for doing Bezier curves. This is freehand. And if you're working freehand, then the tracking comes into account. The higher the number, uh, the, the, the less number of nodes there are in your freehand work, which sounds kind of odd, but that's the way it is. Now, the three things here, connect segments, create on a vector, and show nodes. Uh, I always keep them connected or um, checked. That's the word I'm searching for. Um, over here are the line styles that are available. There's a whole bunch of line styles. You can see them all here and the one that comes with it has blunt ends so I created another one called uh, round ends right here and that's the one I use all the time this is the width uh, the higher it is the bigger the thicker your line will be on your curve okay so the way you use this beast is you take the pen tool I've got it set for bezier curves and I'm just gonna make a mark okay that's a node and I come over here and make another one Without lifting my pen, which I'm using a walking pen, or without moving the uh, letting go of the left mouse button, then I can do this. You can see I can do all kinds of crazy things with this, and uh, I can drag it a long way. You can see I've got like my handles are almost going off screen, and there we go. We have got a funny curve, and I can I can do this all over again, and go over here, and I've got another funny curve. And I can just keep doing that. So I've now got this great big long strange curve. Now if I want, I can I can add some uh, some width to it. And because for black is my foreground color, now I have this curve. And if I choose another tool, the, the vectory things will go away. And the curves will stay. Okay, now that's not much of a shape. But, you know, it's a shape. Okay, so I'm back to the vectors. Now I can, I've got a node there. And one I think around here somewhere. I've almost got rid of the things. Oh, there's one right there. Now, if I go in here, and now we're in edit mode, if I go here and tap on that one, you can see it's got the lines. And I can take this, and I can move it. 
And you can see now it's what it's doing is it's moving both sides of the node equally. Well, if I don't want that, if I just want to move, say, this side without affecting this side, I have to change that node because there are different kinds of no nodes. There is a symmetrical, asymmetrical cusp, and there's another one. I can't remember what the name of it is. But we'll go here and we'll say node type. Oh, it's called the other one's called smooth tangent. I want it to be cusp because cusp allows me to move one arm without affecting the other arm. So now you can see I've got an angle here where before it would have just kept straight. Now, if I wanted to make all my nodes cusp the way I, and that's what I do, uh, just because it makes life easier, I go to objects, edit, select all, so the whole thing is selected. Now just right click, node type, cusp. Now they're all cusp nodes. So click outside the box, and I can go in here and click there. And now I can, I can bring that one in. And I can bring that one in and, and I've completely change the shape now. Now this one's got quite a, uh, an angle going on there, so I'm going to fiddle around with that one a bit. And uh, maybe we'll move this one a bit. Okay. And if I'm not happy with the way it looks, I'll just grab the whole node and move it. Move it anywhere I want. So that's what you can do with this thing. Actually, I, when I was playing with this earlier, I, I, I thought I actually made a pretty good representation of a Loch Ness Monster. But, you know, it didn't quite work out. Now, if I want to add another node in here, anywhere, you can do that, of course. And what you do is you press the control key. And once you get over top of the line, it says add. There you go. And now this one is not a... Uh, a cusp node, but we can change it and we can change this, we can do that. I can right click and make it a node of a, a cusp node, and now I've got that. And so you can see all the, all the different things you can get. For the creative amongst us, they can do some amazing things. I just move points around and have fun with it. Okay, so let's fiddle with the line styles a bit. Now, if I want that to be there. I can have that there. And if I like the different color, um, well, let's just go with the, well, let's cancel that. Let's just go off the swatches, or that one, or maybe that one. How about that one? You can do anything you want with it in there. The other thing is, you can see this thing here on the materials palette. The background color is, is transparent. Now, the first time I ever read something with Paint Shop Pro that said, make the background color transparent, it took me hours, hours, hours to find the darn thing. This is the button right here. It makes it transparent or not transparent. It would have been nice if it had a little diagram that says, this is how you do that. Anyways, they didn't. So, here I am. Now, I'm going to change, whoops, I'm going to make it not transparent. And uh, we've got that nice blue color. We'll contrast it with a little. A green okay okay so now now we got that it's not much of anything but it's something and so the background color will fill in the different parts of your lines if I don't like the color well I can go here to the gradients and I can choose a gradient now there's a dual tone I'm not sure what that does it's kind of a funny one isn't it now we'll do that we can repeat it and say okay. There we go. We got some dual tones. Actually, it looks like little pipes or something, doesn't it? Uh, if I don't like that one, I go over to a pattern. And there's all kinds of patterns that Paint Shop Pro has given you. And I suspect if you want, you can. Uh, there's liquid satin. You could probably run your own. Okay, so there's some liquid satin on there, and we can still change. The orientation of the nodes because we're still in edit mode. Now I can go through and grab this guy, pull it down, and uh, now I've got that, whatever it is. Now this is an interesting pattern, isn't it? And I can also go back in here and I say, okay, I like that pattern, but I want to have a bit of texture on it. And there's lots of textures as well. We'll give it an old cement texture. There we go.
Look at that. So that's what you can do with these things. You can move them around. You can drag them. You can fiddle with them. You can modify them. Just it's very, very useful once you figure out what you want to do. If you haven't figured out what you want to do, then, you know, it can be a, it can be a problem. Whoops, I want to go to the start. Okay, I'm going to drag that down. Actually, I'm going to drag that over here. You can see it says start. And uh, I'm going to take this one. I'm going to move that. And I'm going to make it pointy. And, oh, I can't change it because it's there. Now, that's the end. When I get up here close, it says join. And uh, there we go. Now the whole thing is all joined together, and that's kind of cool as well. So I guess the only other thing to look at maybe would be the uh, freehand tool. I don't use it very often, but it's you know it's, it's got its uses, I guess. And uh, I'm not sure why that thing is there. It shouldn't be. Well, let's just apply it. There we go. Okay, so let's add a new vector layer and grab the freehand tool. Now, you can see what happens is, there we go. Now, I'm going to take, make it background invisible and uh, make the foreground a different color, maybe a darker there, and apply it. Okay, so I've got a nice little uh, swooshy thing going on there. And I can go back and, let's see, undo the vector, select none, and I can now modify these things. So if I wanted to make them all cusp nodes, I can again go to edit, select all, right click, node type, cusp. Now I can go to any one of these nodes and you can see that they're, they're so close together the arms are going to be small, okay? Uh, so there's that one there and probably going to have to zoom in tight on them to see them. Okay, so now you can see the little pointer there and now I can drag that side out. And uh, I can drag this one in. And that gives it kind of a funny little thing there. And this one is kind of a... It wasn't as smooth as I would like it to be there. It's a bit smoother now. So you, you can go through and you can modify everything. Come on, get over there. There we go. So we can come in here and... Whoops! <laughs> I didn't want to do that. Okay, where's there another node? There's got to be a node here somewhere. I know there is. I am not nodeless. Oh, maybe I... Okay, there we go. So that's what you can do with the uh, with the freehand. If you're, especially if you're a good artist, you can have fun with that. Um, and, and this one here, I would probably move it out a bit. Maybe have it changing its shape a little bit more. Bring this one out. You see there's a couple close together there. There we go there. Now it's, it's changing the integrity of my, uh, my little swooshy thing here. And uh, But that's okay. This is all a demo of that thing. And you can see how short that little little one is there because it's so close to this one. So you get in there and you can always find the arrowheads by hovering over until you see that little two-headed arrow. Okay, so that's the uh, the freehand one. I've tried to draw some, uh, do some tracings with it, but I, I wasn't terribly successful, um, and uh, I, I kind of gave up with it. I just stick with the Beziers, but that doesn't mean everybody has to stick with them because there's people a lot more talented than I am out there. Okay, so there you go. That's the pen tool, and it's fun. It is a fun, fun tool, and uh, once you get used to it, it becomes kind of addictive, you know, and you see something and think, oh, man, I want to work with that. I want to fiddle around with that. I want to do something with that. And uh, you end up doing it. You end up trying it uh, in all kinds of different places. You see a picture on the a decal on the back of someone's car. I did this one day. A decal on the back of someone's car, and I was out there with my camera phone taking a picture of this stupid decal so I could come home and play around with it with Paint Shop Pro and kind of ink the outlines of it. Eh, you know, that's when you know you're a fanatic. Okay, well, thanks for watching. I appreciate your time. Uh, pay my site a visit if you came in through YouTube. If you didn't, if you came in off the page site, you'll see a lot of the things about the different types of modes right there on that page. Um, and if you came in through YouTube, down here someplace is my, uh, my website address. You just go to the website, find the Photoshop tag, or not the Photoshop, that's the, the evil other guy. 
the paint shop pro tag and uh, or tab and then go digging around you'll find the pen tool there okay so thanks for watching I appreciate your time and I hope you learned something here because it sure is a good a good tool to use thanks bye